Hershiser is pitching better. He is obviously in a better frame of mind, and he's talking about the hitter stepping out. He is talking to trainer Pat Screener and to one or two others. Remember the last time we saw him go in the dugout, he fired his glove. He was so angry at himself. And I'll tell you, you have to give Dempsey some credit behind that plate because been in that third and fourth inning, he was struggling, and Dempsey got away from the fastball, stayed with the off-speed and the curveball, and that fifth inning when he struck out two, especially Javier, it was a good fastball that got him. I mean, we always talk about pitch selection, and I'll say it again, there are more pitches sent to the shower by bad pitch selection than by opposing batters. You know, you're looking at Jose Canseco, not because he's late, but he assumed somebody had his glove, and he was running out onto the field, and he got into shallow right field, and he didn't have a glove. He had to go back and get it. So Canseco, who could probably play without a glove, we sure got that left hand all bandaged up. And his right looks like a fighter. 0 oh and 1 to count to Marshall. Then Shelby and Mike Davis. 0 oh and 2. Aggressive is really not enough word for the way he swings. No. I mean, his bat is moving from the time it gets to the ballpark. But it's one thing to be. 0-5-8 and 160 be aggressive, but when you're strong like he is, you can cause a lot of havoc. Tonight, grounded to third, struck out 0 for 2. Facing Gene Nelson. Nelson's in the books. He was the first pitcher to steal a base since the designated hitter was introduced in 74, and he even pinch hit three years ago. Found away. That was in a give-up game against Cleveland. And he hit for Greg Walker. How'd he make out? He hit into a double play. It's a no ball, two strike count, and Nelson has been trying to waste the pitch, and Marshall won't let him. He's dangerous with this count. And I think he cracked his bat. Little fly ball to Conseco. One down. It sounded like a celery stalk. And the batter will be John Shelby. The bottom of this inning, they should really shake the ballpark because in the sixth inning, the A's will have Dave Henderson, Jose Canseco, and Dave Parker. Strike to Shelby, who has struck out twice. Lansford on the edge of the grass at third. Strike two. You know, back in the fifth inning, if Lansford didn't make that play on Hamilton, remember the Dodgers had two more hits, so he saved not only an extra base hit, but a run. And Shelby, for the third time tonight, strikes out. And for the seventh time in the series, two down in the series. That was a good sinker. It was out of the strike zone. And you could really see how alive that ball was. Strikeout number one for Gene Nelson. Now, here's the man. Mike Davis walked in the second inning. And then hit the 3-0 pitch for the two-run home run in the fourth. Off speed and low. I'll tell you, there's a knack to hitting 3-0 pitches. A lot of guys really get over-anxious and will chase anything. He got a good fastball, and he knew what to do with it. One ball, no strike. Goes the other way, foul down the left field line and out of play. That will go back in amongst the customers. One ball and one strike like calling pitches. I know you know fellas, Ben, that when you call a pitch for them, they get so anxious, they'll chase anything, and they'd rather not know what's coming. It's the same with the way with 3-0. and old. Just missed the outside corner with the fastball. Ball two. Two and one to Mike Davis. On deck, Rick Dempsey. Lifted that foul. Lansford with a lot of room going over. And hits the railing. Tried to backhand it. Came up empty. Good try by Carney, but he can't get there. So Mike Davis still at the plate. Two and two. I think that's the commissioner's box. It is. Just what he needed, a baseball. He was. Two and two. Well, 
Well, he walked in the second inning, hit a 3-0 and pitch in the fourth for a home run, and now goes 3-2 and here in the sixth. And he walks. So a two-out pass to Davis. Dempsey, the batter, has hit into a double play and struck out. Rosa still waiting for the big bang, and he has the guns to produce it coming up in the bottom half. Time. We've had a lot of that tonight. A lot of it. Storm Davis, Greg Cattaray, and Gene Nelson. And Oral Hershiser for the Dodgers. Popped in the air, foul behind the plate. Hassey coming back to the base of the screen. No play. You know, watching Jerry Crawford, the umpire, walk back uh, before it gets too late, we've not had one move bar. No, in fact, the closest to an argument was whether Sachs had been hit by the bunt last night when Doug Harvey sure. came down the line from third. And that just got to be a loud whisper. It really wasn't much of a discussion. No. Nope. last couple of years, we've had some dandies in this <laughs> World yeah. Series. 0-1. Oh Davis, who would be feeling frisky anyway after hitting that home run, stole 7 out of 10 during the regular year. You have Hamilton on deck. Oh, and two. Rick Dempsey and Ron Hassey. It was Dempsey who called the Dodgers, and it was the A's who kept calling Hassey. And so Dempsey is wearing his uniform, and Ron is in a crouch behind the plate. The A's, they say, called Ron Hassey four times a day for over a week. And Rick Dempsey sat in Fred Clare's office a couple hours until Fred had time to see him. And Mickey Hatcher asking his agent to beg the Dodgers to give him a job in Albuquerque. Tony, he was telling that story yesterday. You, you really had a laugh at it. So he was out jogging and he said, I stole my neighbor's paper, which I did every morning. I'd sit on his porch and read it and I saw where Madlock was hurt and I just said, hey, call him. And he said, well, another club's interested in you. He said, well, call them. And he said, they're interested and I think they're going to sign you. He said, well, I'll get ready to go to Albuquerque. He said, no, no, Los Angeles. And somebody said, were you upset when he told you L.A. instead of Albuquerque? Oh, and one. two. Just missed. One ball and two strikes. So there are quite a few rather unusual stories in this particular World Series. Along with the stars, there are some unlikely heroes. We're in the sixth. Dodgers four, A's one. Two out. Dave Parker will be hitting third in the bottom half of the inning. There goes Davis, and the ball is hit to right. Canseco with it hit over his head to the wall. It's against the wall. Davis will score. Dempsey will stop at second with a double, and the Dodgers lead 5-1. Gene Nelson, who is a sinker ball pitcher, really got a high fastball. He got it up there, and Dempsey was waiting for it, and Conseco could not catch up to it. And you can see LaRusso just has to walk away from it because it was just pitching Dempsey all wrong. You see Davis breaking. Conseco going back doesn't even come close, and Davis with two outs scores easily. So Jeff Hamilton will come up with Dempsey at second, a run over in the sixth inning, and the Dodgers leading 5-1. Fouled away, and he was so far out in front of that, that really was a cue ball shot. Hamilton could be 2 for 2, but he's 0 for 2. 
Larusa could be upset about a couple things. Two outs. You've got Davis up there. He draws the base on balls, and then you give Dempsey the one ball he can hit. On one. Good save by Hassey. One ball and one strike. Hamilton hit the ball hard back to the box. Storm Davis made a good play. In the fifth inning, Carney Lansford made a great play to take a double away from him. Now he's trying to pick up Dempsey. One and one. Missed off speed, ball two. Two and one. High curveballs. That's a danger zone. That's when the needle gets into the red section. Popped it up on the left side and foul ground. There's Carney Lansford. And that will be it, but the Dodgers take a run on a hit and leave a man. At the end of five and a half, 5-1 Dodgers. At UPS, we're changing the look of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. An accomplishment we feel deserves a little flag waving. UPS, we run the tighter ship for the shipping business. Chevy S10 versus Ford Ranger, folks, in the dash from destruction. A test of getaway acceleration between two compact pickups, each with biggest available engine and automatic. Which one has the power to win? Chevy's bigger V6 is already pulling away from Ford and that runaway dynamite car. Chevy S10 has the power to get away, but Ford doesn't. No wonder, when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevy truck. Enjoy baseball memories throughout the years by ordering your copy of the 1988 World Series Souvenir Program. Packed with more than 90 pages of features, facts, and photos on the fall classic, this program is truly a collector's item. Get your souvenir program by sending a $6 check or money order to World Series Program, Box 88, Trenton, New Jersey, 08651. That's Box 88, Trenton, New Jersey, 08651. Be sure to include your proper return address. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Here's the pitch Dempsey gets. Nice high fastball. Now watch when he runs. He thinks, well, it's in front of me. If it goes over his head, I think I got a double. A little more speed. Somebody might be thinking triple. But watch Dempsey now. He knows he's got himself a cinch double. He'll pick up the coach at third base. And he says, no, I better stay here. Let's not get too frisky. So Rick Dempsey carrying the load tonight with the injured Socia. And now here are the A's, and we'll see if they can make some noise in the sixth inning with Henderson, Canseco, and Parker and a very restless crowd just bursting to holler to the seventh. One and one. Sometimes I think you pitch to a hitter from memory. Mike Davis was a big home run hitter here at Oakland. You know tonight he hit a two-run home run and walked twice. The home run came on a 3-0 pitch. You might have forgotten it was the two-out walk to Mike Davis by Dennis Eckersley that preceded the dramatic home run by Kirk Gibson. All of that to a guy who hit less than 200 during the regular year. All two. Base on balls has come home, even this bonus run here after two outs of base on balls. High slicing foul ball down the right field line and out of play. Two and two. 
Dave Henderson popped to short and walked. Remember the last at bat, the first pitch really drove Henderson off the plate, almost hit him. Well, you have to be quick to hold that bat the way he does. That's four, now five strikeouts for Oral Hershiser. He has struck out three of the last four uh, men in his face. And that was a good curveball once again. Henderson, a fastball hitter, he just didn't get a good one to hit. Here it comes. Good curveball. Look at the rotation, the spin on it. In a good spot, and Henderson just can't come close to it. When Hershiser shut out Oakland six to nothing in the first meeting, he struck out eight. And he had five in the first four innings. Now he has five with one out in the sixth inning. And there are those who can just sit and think. As a drive to right, Marshall coming up to handle it. Toughest play for an outfielder. Ball hit right at him. But he froze and then finally moved in. It was the swing by Conseco that really confused him because Hershiser came sidearm with a fastball. Remember, he struck him out with a curveball in the first inning. Sidearm took his power away, and Conseco kind of hit that off the end of the bat. But when you take that big swing like that, it, it is confusing, and Conseco can't figure it out. Oh, he's talking to himself. And he had a big swing, hit it right off the end of the bat with the sidearm fastball, so Hershiser sidearmed him twice. Crowd is still looking for somebody to light a torch, and here's Dave Parker, lined out and grounded out. Ball one. One and one. He lined out on the fastball, and he has just been showing him the fastball. Hershiser has had one troublesome inning. It was the third. You notice another thing, he's not walking around as much, Vin. He's just standing on the mound, getting the ball. Change, one and two. He was definitely not the pitcher we saw in game two at the start of this game. Whether he was not in sync, whether it was nerves, the pressure of the game. Now he basically looks like himself, as if he's standing at attention to an anthem that no one else can hear. Little dribble, a charging Alfredo, gets a pretty good hop and throws out Parker. Seven in a row retired by Hershiser. We'll be back after these messages from your local state. It's been called a terrifyingly powerful thriller. One of the best things you'll see on TV this season, beginning October 30th. Live the secret of favorite son. <laughs> they tried real life. But it wasn't for them. The video is the future. So now they're going to try life as tape heads. My baby doll. They're too hot. <laughs> too hip. They're genius. <laughs> Tim Robbins and John Cusack are tape heads. I'd like to thank your bald head and wig. Rated R. Starts Friday. You've got the magic touch It makes me glow so much It casts a spell It rings a bell The magic touch On your next vacation, feel the Hyatt touch The magic touch at UPS, we're changing the face of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. And let's face it, a drachma saved is a drachma earned. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. So where do you find your neighborhood weather? On K-Ron, Ron, Ron, Ron. The 1988 World Series is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And by AT&T, the right choice. 
We're going to the seventh inning with the Dodgers five and the Athletics one. The Dodgers will have Alfredo Griffin, Steve Sachs, and Franklin Stubbs. In the A's bullpen, Rick Honeycutt and right-hander Eric Plunk. Carney Lansford has already moved in tight at third base. McGuire's back a little bit. When Griffin bunted, he tried to drag it past the pitcher. Full swing and a high foul. Off third, down the line, into the bullpen, and drops and bounces up into the seats. See, the ball really stays in play here. In fact, that one that went in and Lansford hit the uh, railing, those are auxil auxiliary seats, so he would have made that play. A lot of foul balls have been caught. Alfredo Griffin, 0 for 2 tonight. Foul the other way. He'd have hit that one hard. I think it hit right off his foot, Ben. That was way inside. Tracy Woodson has joined Mickey Hatcher. We just told you, Honeycutt and Plunk down in the pen, and there they are. Breaking ball missed up. Lasorda, the cheerleader to the end. And the fastball's up. Well, his wife, Joe, with the mother in Greenville, South Carolina, watching it on TV, I'm sure. Went down there, kind of a good luck charm. Little roller to the right side, playing it very cautiously. Phillips. Cautiously to the extent that's a hard running left hand hitter, but Tony knew his man. One down. We'll bring up Steve Sachs, who that grounded out and Steve singled Sachs. up the middle and singled to right. He's two for three. He's a tough hitter when he uses the center of the field to the right field line. In fact, didn't Lasorda used to find him when he really hit those long fly balls and had that kind of friendly bet? You know, people forget two years ago he hit 332. I mean, you really have to be quite a hitter. But he's got quite a bit of ability. One ball and no strikes. Five runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. One run, two hits for the A's. McGuire, Hassey, and Lansford do up in the bottom of the seventh. Popped it up. Tony Phillips. Franklin Stubbs will be the batter. First baseman Franklin Stubbs. He's been a surprise. He's hit the ball hard, single to right in the first inning. He was aboard when Hatcher then followed with a home run. And then he really hit a shot off Greg Cattaray, who got away cheaply enough, just giving up the base hit. The Stubbs two for three. And he has done a real good job on defense. Remember we were talking about Dave Henderson, how he holds his bat the end of it off his hip. That's the way Stubbs used to hit, left-handed. And now watch what they have him do. Put the bat on his shoulder, but he's still, what they want him to do is to start the swing with the bat on the shoulder. Hard to break. Dip. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Hard to break an old habit. It really is. Two and one to count. Like Henderson, he was also a straight-up hitter. And they've had him bend his knees and at the waist. There's the bat on the shoulder. Ground ball to the hole. Over to get it, McGuire. A foot race won by Nelson. So Gene sets him down in order. At the end of six and a half, 5-1 Dodgers. Throughout the World Series, Citicorp has brought you keys to success, a feature that has discussed some of the qualities that brought the Dodgers and athletics to the World Series. Here's tonight's segment. All right, Ben, and the keys to success are brought to you by Citicorp. Well, as the wise man once said, the key to almost everything is timing. Mickey Hatcher and Mike Davis, three home runs between them all year, then three this week. One more in the series than the A's, Canseco and McGuire, who had combined for 78. Defying all logic, the Dodgers not only survive injuries, they prosper through them. Exit a hobbling Mike Sosha, enter Rick Dempsey to smack an RBI double. Apparently for the Dodgers, the trick is to laugh at most of the usual keys to success and just keep chasing the dream.
Ask every American the meaning of success, and you won't hear the same answer twice. Whatever your idea of succeeding, Citicorp and Citibank can help. With Citibank MasterCard and Visa cards, Citicorp Savings, Diners Club, and Citicorp Mortgage. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. You've seen Ford do this for years. But now there's a big new Chevy with enough power to not only haul tons of trucks up this mountain, but also tow away the entire mountain. The advanced full-size Chevy. No wonder when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. Tomorrow, L.A.'s toughest cop, outer space's sexiest alien, and something out there wants to destroy them. The exciting series premiere, Something is Out There. Then... You have the right to remain silent, or you have the right to die. The cop who's hunted by a deranged killer. Does he know where you are? The woman whose love makes her a target. A dangerous company. Jimmy Smits and Marky Post. From Elmore Leonard's best-selling suspense novel, Glitz, right after Something is Out There premieres tomorrow. Bottom of the seventh inning. Dodgers five, A's one. Mark McGuire, Ron Hassey, and Carney Lansford. McGuire glide to center and struck out. 0 for 2. Struck him out on breaking ball. Starts him. And a little wrinkle misses. Ball one. First guys are allowing one run, two hits. Fastball hit in the air and down the right field line in the corner goes Marshall running to the wall and makes the play. Then I think one of the big things is watching Hershiser just stand on the mound rather than pacing around like he did in the early stages. I tell you, he does a lot of things uh, the way he figures them out now. Here's something he's doing, pours it down his neck. Now watch what he does. He wakes himself up, early wake up call. You know, there are a couple of things that pitchers do. You have to learn their habits. It has nothing to do with throwing a baseball. It tells you they're tired. Walking around is one. Checking the defense when they don't normally do it. Grabbing the rosin bag. Shaking off signs. Asking for new balls. And if you don't know those habits, uh, he doesn't give you the message. But Hershey, you look at him standing there now and getting ready to fire him. And working on Hassey, a strike, 0-1. Oh I tell you, it's cool here tonight. If McGuire had hit that ball on a warm summer's day, that thing would have gone out. Ground foul. And in watching Mike Marshall run parallel to the right field wall to handle it, remember the ball that McGuire hit in the All-Star game? In the same area, in the right field corner, just missed hitting it out. Same story here. He's probably, that's what he's saying to Steinbach. He's, you know, I hit that ball pretty good. I thought it was gone. I see him running over. And it'll make you talk to yourself. 0-2 to Ron Hassey. And he's badly fooled on an off-speed pitch, and that gives Hershiser a half a dozen strikeouts. And whatever it was in the early going, when he appeared to be struggling and fighting himself, he has really settled in. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. He's retired nine in a row. And a strike to Carney Lansford. Good fastball to a fastball hitter. He's got confidence in that pitch now where he didn't have it early. He, he didn't have that good fastball. And Dempsey and Hirschheiser went hunting and found it. Changed up on him. 2-0. and oh. Lansford singled and scored the only athletic run. Clyde to center in the fourth. Made an exceptionally fine play on the ball hit by Hamilton in the fifth inning. What he did at the Los Angeles, Hershiser, he just kind of goes back there and goes over the scouting report, to literally talking to himself to know exactly what he wants to do. Two and one. Larusa and he knows it, running out of time with two out in the seventh.
Shorta and Joe Ferguson know they're getting closer to the bubble. Lifted that one, a fly ball to center. I think Carney would like to have taken that swing back. So they're gone in the seventh at the end of seven. Dodgers five, A's one. The new Buick Riviera. It's a classic all over again. The road has been waiting. You're anticipating the spirit you felt way back when. Riviera is back. A classic again. It's a legend once more. What the road's waiting for. Riviera, a classic returns. Oh, the great American road belongs to Buick. Will your new car outlive your new car loan? Give your engine extra protection and help keep your car running like you longer with STP's new Supra Wear Control so you'll have something to show for your investment down the road. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? What do we do now? To celebrate the end of daylight savings, Phillips is having a light bulb sellathon. Um, no one else has ever done this before. Right now, ooh, uh, participating stores have Phillips longer life bulbs at big savings. Value, savings, convenience. Oh. So remember, it's almost time to change your clock back. Uh oh. And it's time to change your bulb during Phillips daylight savings savings. Ow! Oh. What a party! <laughs> He loves baseball. Could have been a start. Except I couldn't hit. Or catch. Or pitch. Or watch a good game. What a gift. And Kraft can help you with this great baseball watching sandwich. You take roast beef slices and heat them in Kraft barbecue sauce, put them on hard roll, and top with slices of Velveeta. That's good food and good food ideas from Kraft. He's so athletic. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Oilers battle the Bengals. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Breaking ball missing to Mickey Hatcher. One ball and no strike. Hatcher had a very big hit in the first inning. Not just a home run, but it seemed to really lift the Dodgers and got them off. And, of course, the one thing I'm sure that Tony La Russa wanted to do, down three games to one, was to beat the Dodgers to the scoreboard. And a home run, boy, that lit him up. And he hits a one-hopper at Phillips, and Tony makes the play. If ever there was a man in the stands, and all of us can relate to it, a father who could say, that's my boy, it would be that gentleman who is gesturing to his friends, six outs to go. There's his son. Mike Marshall, the batter. He's up there. And I tell you, I just marvel. When I watch him hit, I watch his feet. Now, that first swing, he lifted his leg up much like uh, the Sadahara O of the Japanese baseball. Now, see if he does it again. Not quite as much, but he just goes to whacking, man. Pops it up in a trio. Any one of the three, it'll be Henderson. So quickly, two out in the eighth inning. When the A's come up in the bottom of the eighth, they are due to send up Tony Phillips, Walt Weiss, Julian Javier. There's that kick of his. Did I say Julian? Yes, you did. Huh? <laughs> Understandable. And Julio appreciates it. I was it. thinking, you know, about that's my boy. Yep. And I'm sure that's what Julian is thinking. Yeah. One and oh. One and one. Shelby, 0 for 3 on strikeouts. 1 and 2. You'd never know that he had all the strikeouts. His expression really never changes. Never. Home run, strikeout, it stays the same. We're talking about that word inscrutable, it really should be applied to John. Two 
come to. He's at Dempsey said he was on the club three years before he knew he could talk. <laughs> Five runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. One run, two hits for Oakland. I tell you, that is really a misnomer to a degree that Hershiser, as you see right there, he was really struggling. And you're going to hear a lot of talk if he wins this game from the Oakland A's saying we let him get away. He's batting Mike Sharperson, a young infielder who is not eligible to play, but is there wearing the uniform with the rest of the gang. All four. So the two-out walk to Shelby will bring up Mike Davis and also Tony La Russa. He has Rick Honeycutt down in the bullpen. Well, he got burned the last time. Remember, he had a two-out walk to Davis, and then Dempsey hit the double. So La Russa is going to make a move, and so will we. There's something made for your wallet that's more powerful than money. Something that connects you to anyone virtually anywhere in the world. Bonjour, j'arrive à 10 heures. From any phone in the U.S. Down the 24 hours a day. Something that not only saves you time, it saves you money. Hi, John. Just got in. Where's the meeting? Okay, fax it to my hotel. The MCI card. Yeah, we got the green light. It is America's business card. Introducing an automobile that will change the way you think about two-seaters. Riata by Buick. The premium American two-seater you can be comfortable with. Riata offers a high level of luxury, sophisticated conveniences, and a remarkable amount of room at a most attractive price. If your aim in life has always been high, drive the premium American two-seater. Riata by Buick. Go ahead. You deserve it. Michael Dukakis has opposed virtually every defense system we developed. He opposed new aircraft carriers. He opposed anti-satellite weapons. He opposed four missile systems, including the Pershing II missile deployment. Dukakis opposed the stealth bomber and a ground emergency warning system against nuclear attack. He even criticized our rescue mission to Grenada and our strike on Libya. And now he wants to be our commander-in-chief. America can't afford that risk. For all you know, your family may have a Galileo, a Beethoven, a Columbus, even a Michelangelo. Which is why Apple created the 2GS to run all kinds of programs for all kinds of people. Programs to stimulate and educate, theorize and visualize the Apple 2GS. Because you never know when genius may strike. Tuesday, it's the show People Magazine calls the steamy, stylish, sexy, sassy, sizzling new series of the season. It's Midnight Caller, premiering Tuesday. A remarkable story for a fellow who was so frustrated trying to make the major league. A left-hander who kept being cut almost the last day of spring training every year and still insists the Dodgers made a terrible mistake in keeping Colfax and sending him out. But Tommy Lasorda, right now, sitting on top of the world. It's an impressive record. Rick Honeycutt will be pitching to Mike Davis with John Shelby at first, two out in the eighth inning. And the Dodgers leading the A's five to one. Mike hit a 3-0 pitch for a two-run home run in the fourth inning that might very well be labeled the crusher. I mean, that, where Hatchers was the inspiration. Davis is the one that really took the life right out of the place. It had more than just a home run uh, touch to it, or flair, because it was a 3-0 pitch, and Lasorda, you just wouldn't figure that Davis would be given the green light because of the year he had, but Lasorda, sensing something, gave him the green light and really paid off, and that was the pressure. That was the one that really... It, it, the fans, I don't think the fans recovered from it, much less the ball, the Oakland A's, the ball players. 0-1. Oh little foul off third. Carney coming in a hurry. Can't get it. Great effort. Ball was hit off the handle, and he made a great effort because it kept slicing away from him, and you can see the effort. He slid a long way. Watch him. He knows he's got a lot of room. Down he goes, but just can't quite get to it. I was thinking, you know, you talk about the maddening part of this game. And I mean the game of baseball. 
In the fourth inning, if you're Storm Davis, you're very much in the game. And a little squibber by Hatcher up along third. He barely beats it out with a belly whopper. You strike out Marshall and Shelby. And then Davis hits a 3-0 and pitch for a two-run home run. And then you strike out Dempsey. So in an inning that saw Storm Davis strike out the side, he was also dealt his most severe blow. When it comes to doing business with foreign lands, you gotta know how to balance your trade. You gotta know the time. You gotta know your zones. You gotta know how to speak the language. You gotta bring things in from far away. You gotta know their destinations. Your customers are waiting at the end of the line. Now is no time for complications. This reminder from Federal Express that it's not just a package. It's your business. You're invited today to a colorful show of smoothness, of value, of style. The Great American Road Show by Buick. Yeah, it's a powerful cast with exciting new stars. Cars that were born to perform. Yeah, the Great American Road Show by Buick. Mark and Brian of Rockin' LA. It's another hot one out there. 98, 12, 3 degrees, and no release in sight. It's hot, hot, hot. Right now. Hot. The only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Man, I could sure go for one of these. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth, dry taste hasn't been changed by new pasteurization, we've got it Whoa, down cold. Right. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as beer gets. Uh, we have a slightly revised forecast. Yeah. It's cold, cold, cold. cold. The promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. There is concern in the near corner of the Dodger dugout, and I believe it would be concerning the plate umpire Jerry Crawford, who walked over along with several of the other umpires, immediately went to where the trainers were. Yes, there's something wrong with Jerry. Meanwhile, all of her shies it can do is keep throwing to stay loose. Harvey and uh, Crawford walked over there. I don't know if it's equipment. His cousin's over there now. Yeah, I wouldn't think there would be such an anxious knot of players for just equipment. I don't know. I can't see. Hershiser has concluded his warm-ups. He's saying, come on now. And now Jerry is limping it, as he comes back. They must have taped that limp knee is what it was. Yep. Yeah. Robert in pain. Meanwhile, Jose Gonzalez is now in left field, replacing Mickey Hatcher. Jose Gonzalez. You talk about that's my boy. How about old Shag Crawford watching this World Series? And Shag saying, that's my boy. Jerry Crawford behind the plate. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Hatcher hit a two-run home run in the first inning. The A's came back on a scoring fly ball to get a run in the third. Mike Davis hit a two-run home run in the fifth, and the Dodgers added another one. Dempsey doubled in Mike Davis. So the Dodgers lead the A's 5-1. Storm Davis, Greg Cattaray, and Gene Nelson and Rick Honeycutt for Oakland, and Oral Hershiser for Los Angeles. Tony Phillips had a hit-and-run single with a hole at short and struck out. Hershiser warning both Stubbs and Hamilton be alive. Crowd trying to will its ball club to get a move on. Let's go A. Ball one. Boy, how they wanted to cheer, but the only chance they had so far was in the third inning. 
Left field is calling time for some reason. And Sal is somebody's throwing things or what? I don't know. There's a ball behind second base. Harvey just picked it up. One ball and no strikes to Tony Phillips. In there. 49,317 here at the Oakland Coliseum. One ball, one strike. In there. One and two. I tell you. I think Dempsey's done an outstanding job tonight because you, know, you look at Mike Davis, no doubt that Hershiser was struggling, stayed with him, kept looking for the fastball, got it, had the curveball most of the night, and they're really mixing him up. Breaking ball fouled away. Hershiser starts this eighth inning, having retired ten in a row. The last man to get aboard was Hassey with a two-out walk in the fourth inning. The only two hits he allowed was when he looked out of sync and they were back-to-back -back hits in the third inning. Two and two. There have really been two pieces of strategy, uh, Vin, I think, in this game. That 3-0 pitch by Mike Davis and then that hit-run play with Phillips. All right. So it's really been station, station, back to basics. Two balls and two strikes. And he goes three and two to the leadoff man, Phillips. He has walked two tonight. Henderson back in the third inning. And Hassey in the fourth. The A's looking for a break. Trying to get something started. Three balls, two strikes. And he walked him. And for the Dodgers, that has to be a storm signal. The bullpen might be stern. Jay Howell goes jogging down along with Jesse Orozco. When you are a control pitcher and you're leading by four and you walk the leadoff man in an inning, that's a storm signal. The Dodgers and Lasorda have scored five runs, either on a walk or a hit batter. Runner going and a ground ball to Stubbs for the out. Caught me by surprise, five to one, and playing <laughs> hit and run. I don't know. The Weiss, a roller to Stubbs. Phillips advances to second, and Stan Javier coming up. Well, Jay Howell, they had that big head-to-head -head confrontation last night. Going back to work with Alejandro Pena. Javier grounded out hard, had a scoring fly ball, and struck out. Bouncer up the middle. Scoring is Phillips to make it 5-2 to two Dodgers. And this crowd can make a little noise now. As the A's are a long way from being out of it. That play paid off for La Russa by starting a runner. Phillips gets the second, scores on the ground ball. And now you go swimming in the deep water with Henderson, Canseco, and Parker. And Ron Peronoski is going out to the mound to talk to Hershiser. As we said, that walk to Phillips in the eighth inning was an indication that something was wrong. And Howell and Pena continue to heat up. You've got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six guys. One swing of the bat can pick you up a couple runs. Remember, Mr. Hershiser held his fingers up to a friend a few rows back. Six outs to go. Now it's five outs to go. Oral has made 91 pitches. And he's pacing once again. Dave Henderson, the batter, popped to short, walked and struck out. Ball one, and now the crowd has a glimmer of hope. I would think this would be Hershiser's man to get, or it'll be a move made. And he's high and inside, and he's behind 2-0. and oh. And now the Dodgers, who have been sitting back, get restless and the Oakland A's flex up
2-0 to Henderson. Ball three. And now this crowd that has been so quiet since the third inning comes alive. And a chant. All oh, oh. and oh. And there he goes playing games. They're going to try everything these days. They've got it going. And he walked in. He had walked two batters in seven innings. He has walked two of the four batters he has faced in the eighth. And Dempsey heading for the mound. He's buying time because they're looking to make a move. Jose Canseco, and how many times have we said it in this series, is the tying run. They want to know if they're running on the bullpen and are not getting any answer because they're taking the hat off and they're going to send... They want to see what's happening here. I think we sort of said let him go just then. So apparently it'll be Hershiser going head-to-head -head with Jose Canseco. Two on, one out in the eighth, 5-2 Dodgers. Foul ball, hard, down into the pen. Looks like Lasorda saying he got me this far, I'm going to stay with him. in at first, Javier at second, one out in the eighth. So he was inside, now outside. One ball, one strike. Side-armed him two of the three times that Conseco has been up there, struck him out once and got him on a fly ball to right field. Hit down the line, foul into the Dodger bullpen. We have seen several times Tony La Russa pacing in the Oakland dugout as you look at Parker on deck. Just above the lineup card in the Oakland dugout is a word. It is directly above the lineup card. And it's a word that the American League is very familiar with. It is a word the Dodgers worried about ever since the series started. There it is, flammable. You betcha. One and two, the count of Canseco. You know what? This is the way it should be. Exactly. Wonderful try to side on him. Good curveball. He really fought off a tough pitch there. And Seiko. So the two big stars locked with the ball game on the line. And Seiko at the plate. Hershiser on the mound. He, One out. He placed that in a great spot. because it was the one pitch he wanted to throw. You saw him with the great close-up that we had of uh, Hershiser really shaking off the pitch. 
Tell you, he is really battling. Bulldog is perfect. You can see those arms pull in as he just could not get a good swing at that good fastball. Tell you, Lasorda is going a long way with him. Two out in the eighth inning. And Dave Parker, the batter. Parker lined out to Sachs, grounded to Stubbs, and rolled out to Griffin, the shortstop. 0 for 3, representing the tying run. And Dempsey, you can see the way we're in that long conversation, just making sure exactly what the sequence of pitches are going to be used against Parker. Well, you can take a 1 for 19, and they follow that scouting report to a T. Javier at second, Henderson at first, and the Cobra at the plate. And it got away at the plate, and the runners move up. It must have hit Dempsey's shin guard to bounce like that. Might have hit Jerry Crawford. I think it hit Crawford, the umpire. Let's see, because it's inside and looks like it hit Crawford's leg. He doesn't, it did. It hit him right on the shoe. Dempsey did not get a glove on it, and Jerry, who was limping before, hit, watch it. It goes right under the glove, and, and usually you kind of come up with the glove and shift over, but when it hit Crawford's leg, it just carried him to where Dempsey didn't know where it was. The so Crawford wearing shin guards and safety shoes. And that's why the ball shot off so erratically. It hit right down there and went flying off to the left. It was, of course, a wild pitch. So second and third, two out. It puts a lot of pressure on the infield. No force play handy. You have Javier at third, Henderson at second, two away. Parker with McGuire on deck. And remember, McGuire last night had a big at bat with the bases loaded and popped up. 5 2 Dodgers, two out, eighth inning. Right. 1 1. Dennis Eckersley and Eric Plunk in the A's bullpen. Alejandro Pena and Jesse Orozco in the Dodger pen. Parker will chase the curveball low and inside. And there he did. did, one and two. He is anxious up there, and Dempsey did a great job of blocking that ball. He knew it, and I tell you, your pitcher has to have confidence in you that you will block that ball, or he will not throw it. He'll get it up. Look how low this pitch is. Especially on the heels of a wild pitch. Yeah, exactly. Now, he really gets in front of it, and if the pitcher doesn't have confidence, he'll bring that curveball up, and then he's in big trouble. One ball, two strikes. Got him on that low breaking ball. One run, one hit, two left, and at the end of eight, five, two, Dodgers. When the clock strikes half past six, babe, time to head for golden light. It's a good time for a great taste dinner at That's it? That's all? you got to be kidding. It done. You sure? If you thought dental cleanings were easy with Target Control Crest... I can't believe it. They just got easier. Boy, that was fast. Introducing new and improved Target Control Crest. You're all done? No. The new Target Fighting Formula that can actually help stop Target before it starts. A piece of cake. Target Control Crest, the dentist's choice, is now harder on Target and easier on you. Thank you very much. For over a century, the Prudential has been helping American families make their dreams come true. 
with rock-solid protection and guidance toward a brighter financial future. Today, we can help make another great American dream come true. Finding a place to call home. The Prudential Real Estate Affiliates, one of the companies of the Prudential. All our science, our technology, our mathematics. Somehow they add up to moments beyond any calculation. moment in the moment and now you see what happened the curveball swung on and missed by Dave Parker I tell you Ben he went a long way with Hershiser I, I I tell you he stuck with him it was interesting he had Howell and Pena throwing and all of a sudden as we see Mr. Hershiser saying three outs to go we could read Tommy's lips when he said let him go and that's when we knew that Hershiser was going to stay in when he walked Henderson, I thought that was big, big trouble. And tribute to Hershiser and to Lasorda. He just reminded everybody, three more outs. We referred to Mickey Hatcher as a loose cannon. I guess really, Jose Canseco would be the quiet cannon in right field. How many times he has had the chance and, of course, did deliver the slam. Eric Plunk working on Rick Dempsey. Ball one. It's only hit in the series. Mm -hmm. Canseco with a runner at first hit into a force play. And then, of course, popped up in the eighth. Flied out in the sixth. Fly ball, right center. Canseco and Henderson. It'll be Jose. Boy, when you have been in the spotlight, as he has been in all year, and deservedly so, and then to be completely shut down except for that one early swing, that, that's a heavy load to carry. And that really is. And I wonder if he wasn't thinking about anything but the game that time he was running out to his position without his glove. I'll tell you that one for 19, because it wasn't at that time one for 19, that'll make you think about a lot of things. You have Hamilton... 0 for 3. Big breaking ball on the corner for a strike. And Tony La Russa looking at his card. He has McGuire, Hassey, and Lansford in the bottom of the ninth. By the way, not to, to put any more dead bodies at the footstep at the door of Jose Canseco, he's not alone in in being a superstar who has been held very much so in check in the World Series. Popped up, foul, McGuire down the line, it's his call. In 1981, in the World Series between the Yankees and the Dodgers, Dave Winfield had one hit in 22 at-bats. La Russa now with Alfredo Griffin, the batter. And he's going to make a move. In 1983 in the World Series, Mike Schmidt had one hit in 20 at-bats. You're looking at a new level of comfort. Barefoot comfort. Comfort you get with Carrier's revolutionary new gas furnace. With breakthrough technology, Carrier gives you remarkably even heat. With no toe-chilling drafts. Economical, the most. Quiet, quieter than a mouse. Carrier. Our engineers aren't comfortable until you are. For home heating, for cooking, hot water, or drying. Choose gas. America's best energy value. Over time, they gained a wisdom about the foods they ate. The wisdom handed down in a breakfast enjoyed throughout Europe. 
known in America as Kellogg's Mueslicks. A natural balance of wheat bran fiber, oats, rice, corn, barley, dates, almonds, and figs. Kellogg's Mueslicks, bran or five grain, what breakfast was meant to be. As a leader in business solutions, IBM's developed a new computer you can really hang your hat on. The IBM Application System 400. Whether you're in construction, banking, or mining, education, from manufacturing to medicine, retailing to ranching, the IBM Application System 400 can give you specific solutions for your specific business, no matter what hat you wear. Every milestone deserves a new look at your insurance and financial needs with your MetLife representative. Get Met. It pays. It is more than just a substitution. It's a sign of sensitivity and thoughtfulness. Tony La Russa had one man who had not appeared in the World Series, Todd Burns. He got him in there. That's a lovely thing to do. I think it's a real touch of class on La Russa's part. Uh, the only other one I can think of was Sparky Anderson. He was losing to Pat mm -hmm. Corrales had not been in the game. Real touch of class. Strike two. 0 oh and 2 the count. Because you just don't know when that next World Series is going to roll around for you, if ever. Take a look at a guy like Ernie Bank who's on the field. Never played in one. Little ground ball wide a third. Barney Lansford over to McGuire. Okay. McGuire, Hassey, and Lansford do up in the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers five, A's two. Every time I hold this Olympic coin, I get goosebumps thinking of Evelyn Ashford. What courage. She tore leg muscle, but somehow she came back and took the gold. Support our present and future athletes with the official U.S. Olympic commemorative coins in gold or silver from the U.S. Navy. No! Help America shine. Available at Kmart, participating banks, and savings and loans. He strained his back real bad about a week ago, and I had this free sample of Metaprin. I couldn't believe how fast it worked. I had this awful headache, and Metaprin fixed me right up. I have arthritis pain sometimes, and it's nice to know Metaprin is there. I heard it's got what's in Motrin. Metaprin is for tough pain. It has ibuprofen, the same medicine as Motrin, and nothing's proven faster. You know, not very long ago, I would just grin and bear it. Now it's all I use. Metaprin just works. When the pain gets tough, get Metaprin. On your path to success, reach for America's strongest financial helping hand, Citicorp and Citibank. More American families own their own homes and attend college with our help, and more get what they want with MasterCard and Visa cards from Citibank than from any other company. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Like father, like son. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Dodgers trying to win the 1988 World Series right now. And standing in the way of Oral Hershiser, Mark McGuire, Ron Hasse, and Carney Lansford. McGuire, fly to center, struck out, fly deep to right. The hero the other night with his ninth inning home run. I think you're going to see Hershiser behind that mound a lot because in, that Do in Dodger Stadium, that's what he did and just kind of regrouped almost on every pitch to make sure he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Pena and Orozco are behind him in the bullpen. Off speed, though, starts him with a change. One ball and no strikes. Fast ball, one and one. Breaking ball is hit to left. 
center. Back goes Shelby to the wall to make the catch. You're going to look at McGuire's average and say he didn't hit much in this series, but he's hit some balls hard here and didn't get any base hits. He hit one to center last night that died at the last minute. He hit that long fly ball to right that looked like it had a chance to go out. Now he hits one that dies, and I really have to believe it's because it's getting so much cooler. One down in the ninth. Ron Hassey. Fly to left, walk, struck out. Barney Lansford on deck. Strike. So in the eighth inning, he started off by walking Phillips and got in trouble. Now he gets McGuire and picks up the strike to Hassey. And the breaking ball. Dead low ball pull hitter, and he throws a fastball outside, not a breaking ball. Talking about that breaking ball, Dave Parker, I think, will be thinking about that all winter. Yes, he will. No balls and two strikes to Ron Hassey. Breaking ball, got him looking. Eight strikeouts for Oral Hershiser. And it really began in the fifth inning when he really settled in. One out to go for him, his teammates, and his family in the stand. And standing in the way, Carney Lansford. He's made 108 pitches up until right now. Lansford single scored a run and twice flied to center. His single went to center. Ground ball to the hole, backhanded by Griffin. Off balance throw is too late. And the A's are still alive. Griffin ended up right on the foul line. He really made a fine play. Was not satisfied just to come up with it. Tried to get his man in first base. But it was almost an impossible throw for him. And he did make it close. By a whisker. And so Tony Phillips, as he was walking up to home plate, kept looking back at the Oakland dugout. And now he has reached home plate. So he knows he's up there to bat. Tony Phillips. Tony Phillips had an infield single to the hole, struck out and walked. Hershiser trying to help out young Jeff Hamilton as he gestured for the moment. He gave everybody instructions, stubs and sacks, watch the bunt. Ball one, Terry Steinbach comes out on deck. So Steinbach would be hitting for Walt Weiss. There goes the runner. They're not paying attention to him. Ball two. He's got to make sure the Steinbach doesn't get up there. 5-2. He'd be the tying run. So he's going to go off the full windup and bear down on Phillips. Phillips single, struck out, walk, set up one run, scored one. And going to third on ball three. So Lansford getting a free ride. And now suddenly, and you know he was struggling in the eighth inning, Hershiser struggling in the ninth. And Steinbach waiting for one last shot. And Kirk Gibson knows what you can do with one last shot. Interesting thing. You know it's a cool evening here. And there was Gibson sitting there. And he was sweating. There's a lot of sweating going on here. You can say that again. 3-0 to Phillips. play you have no defense against the base on balls and Hershiser knows that three and one and another one well, he's taking all the way they're gonna make him run out the string here we are and now watch Hershiser regroup
Three and two to Tony Phillips. Lansford down the line from third with two out. Steinbach on deck. Five two Dodgers in the ninth. Got him. They've done it. Like the 1969 Mets, it's the impossible dream revisited. A fastball, nine strikeouts for Hirschheiser. He gives up a total of four hits, and look at the bob. It looked like he was going to be replaced, but he hung in there. Bulldog is quite a name. And meanwhile, Jose Canseco quietly back to the dressing room. The biggest single gun for the Oakland Athletics, thoroughly muffled in the series. And Mr. Oral Hershiser Sr. can finally relax for a moment. The A's, a great hitting ball club, hit 177 in the series and scored a total of 11 runs in five games. Never would have believed it unless you saw it. You'd have to attribute it to pretty good pitching. Very good pitching. And especially by the leader on the staff, the master of the house, Oral Hershiser, who has had really the most remarkable length of success of any pitcher I have ever seen. I tell you, that streak he had, the hardest it was ever be broken, and he's just been on such a roll, and Lasorda stayed right with him, and you have to give him a lot of credit. The 3 and all green light he gave to Davis, letting Hershiser finish it. And look at it. A reminder, of course, as soon as the players leave the field, Marvin Bob will be down in the Dodger clubhouse, and you can share the celebratory moment with them. as you watch them file up the runway that uh, tonight's NBC Miller Lite player of the game would have to be Oral Hershiser. Miller Lite happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Oral Hershiser to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Boy, anytime you can hold the Oakland Athletics to two runs and strike out nine, limit them to only four hits, you are indeed the player of the game. Friends, the 1988 World Series has been brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste. It's as real as it gets. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The great American road belongs to Buick. And by Federal Express, who reminds you that it's not just a package. It's your business. We'll be back with interviews from the Victorious Dressing Room after this. It is a leader in automotive products and braking systems. It is one of the largest luxury hotel chains in the world. It is a leader in defense technology. It is an insurance company with over $22 billion in assets. It is ITT. A new ITT. If you're looking for a company that knows how to build businesses into leaders, this is it. When the clock strikes half past six, babe, time to head for golden light. It's a good time for a great taste dinner at McDonald's. American desire to succeed runs in the family, brought here by your great-great-grandparents and handed down to you. In that same spirit of success, Citicorp and Citibank help more Americans own homes, attend college, and get what they want with MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We also serve millions of customers around the world. 
Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Roger, sometimes I wish you were a fish. Coast, the scent opens your eyes. Coast ladder, spirits start to rise. Coast is the way to make you feel alive. Roger, want to go to the park? Coast, feel alive with Coast. This 1988 World Series postgame show is brought to you by the heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. And let's go to Bob Costas. All right, Vin, thanks very much. Oral Hershiser has been named the most valuable player. We'll have the presentation of the Chevrolet Trophy in just a moment. But first of all, I guess, besides the congratulations, we might say that it's a remarkable thing that when a pitcher gives up four hits and strikes out nine, they're talking about him struggling and not having his best stuff. Well, I did struggle out there. I think at times I got a little pumped up and threw the ball high and away. I threw a lot of change-ups and off-speed pitches once the uh, we got the big lead. And uh, that kind of threw me out of sync. I was throwing a lot of change ups and off-speed pitches and then when I went back to the hard stuff and got in trouble the fastball would ride high and away because it's a different energy level and uh, I struggled but uh, only gave up two runs fortunately what thoughts were going through your mind we saw you your head back between innings your eyes closed almost meditating but I was just sitting there uh, I was really singing hymns and I was just kind of relaxing and singing hymns to myself to keep my adrenaline down because every time I thought about the game and us ahead in the World Series, I got too excited to pitch. And I just wanted to sit back and take some deep breaths, and I just started singing to myself. Were you surprised Lasorda stuck with you through the tough eighth inning? Well, I looked in the dugout and kind of gave him a high sign, like I'm all right, because I knew one more visit. They couldn't come out and talk to me. And I said, I'm okay. And I just gave him the glove down that I'm okay. And uh, he st stuck with me, and I got Jose to pop out and struck out Parker. And I know I had our bench awfully nervous. <laughs> Are you conscious of your mom and dad, your wife, people that are close to you in the stands? Do you make eye contact? I make eye contact with my wife a whole lot during the game, just when I walk in and off the field. And uh, my parents are right next to them, so I knew they were there. But, I'm, excuse me, I really think I'm just looking for my wife. Uh, in Dodger Stadium, it's a lot easier because I hit. And uh, when I come in the on-deck circle, that's when I give my high sign and, and talk to her kind of even through sign language. But here, when you don't hit, it's kind of tough. How can you be so composed after a season like this and a playoff and World Series performance like this that really has, I think it's fair to say, etched you a spot eternally in baseball lore. How can you be so composed? Well, I just feel like uh, the Lord has just blessed me with composure and he's kept me calm through the whole thing. And uh, I know this isn't a religious show, but I just thank God for everything that's happened this year for our ball club, the way we stuck through, for the injuries that we've come through. And we, Fred Flair just put an outstanding ball club on the, on the field. And the reason he did that is just because he went in the free agent market. He didn't go talent for talent with trades. He got us some big players players some guys to give us some depth and uh, you got to give a lot of credit to that man also somebody once said of Sandy Koufax after a moment like this when they couldn't find him in the clubhouse for a few minutes they asked where is he and a teammate said he's been called up to a higher league that has to be the next step for you you're too good for these guys no I, I, I feel like I'm climbing a mountain every time out there Bob I mean it is really hard to pitch in the big leagues believe me <laughs> it's a war out there and and those Oakland A's got a, you got to give them a lot of credit they're an outstanding ball club but I think they just ran into us when we were pitching very very hot and we we're getting a lot of key hits I mean you can't expect a whole lot of runs out of lineup we put out there but these guys really had a lot of character and a lot of heart and we wanted to win Oral congratulations again we'll ask you to come back in a couple of minutes to accept the trophy oh, thanks Bob we'll take a break and talk with Tommy Lasorda when we return to a wild Dodger clubhouse as the postgame show continues in just a moment listen listen to the heartbeat listen up
Too many people think a spark plug's a spark plug. Well, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs like rounds in a chamber, firing up to 30 times a second for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. From the moment you create a document, Xerox can make it the best it can be with workstations and typewriters that easily change, correct, or revise anything. With business publishing systems that compose documents so sharp and crisp, they make your whole company look good. Intelligent printers that are incredibly productive. And fax machines that send your document, let you know it got there, and guarantee delivery. And you thought we only made great copiers. Team Xerox, we document the world. Welcome back to the Oakland Coliseum. Marv Albert in the office of Oakland A's manager Tony La Russa. Tony, how disappointing is this for you? Uh, very. You know, we feel like we let a lot of people down. Uh, we wanted it real bad. Uh, I just I congratulate Tom, his coaches, players, their whole organization. Uh, they did what they had to do. They beat us. Uh, very disappointed. But I'll tell you, Marv, so that I hope everybody hears this. I hope it gets back to our players. I'm very proud of our, our players. We got beat. We tried. We took our shot. We had a great year. It just didn't work it in. How do you explain Jose Canseco, one for 19, Mark McGuire, one for 17? That the story of the World Series. Well, I think there's one big explanation. Dodger pitching shut us down. It's been the same story for years, for 100 years in baseball. If you make quality pitches, and I don't care how good a hitter you are, uh, you're not going to make good enough contact. So I, I credit their pitching, but uh, like I said, we're disappointed. But I'm very proud of what this club accomplished, and uh, sometime later we'll have a very positive feeling. All right, looking back, are there any moves that you would do differently? No. I, I it was the only game we won. You know, when I, at one time that I bunt, didn't bunt Weiss because I thought they were playing bunt defense. I look at it, Stubbs was staying by the bag. We could have bunted, but uh, we ended up winning that game. Other than that, you know, we... Uh, you know, we were trying to push. Uh, you saw today, we only got two guys on base, and we had run both times. We were trying to push, but against Hershey, we never got anybody on. You feel the A's were pressing? I think they're towards the end. You know, I mean, uh, early on, I thought we were ready. Uh, but then when you start piling up at-bats and outs, and there's not success, I mean, you, you start to try to force it, and that's a very tough way to play. All right, Tony, thanks for coming on. A obviously dejected Oakland A's manager, Tony La Russa. Different atmosphere, as you might expect, in the Dodger clubhouse. Let's get back to Bob Costas. All right, Marv, a gracious Tony La Russa, one of baseball's best managers. There's every chance he'll be back. But the moment now belongs to Tommy Lasorda. And before we talk with him and with his general manager, Fred Clare, let's turn to Commissioner Peter Ubaroth, who has the presentation of the championship trophy, which belongs to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, baseball's a world sport, but the Dodgers are in a of the world tonight and they've done it and they've done it uh, by just playing good old fight and they've fooled a lot of people but it's a compliment to the organization to these three gentlemen here so without further ado I mu must say the president of the United States has invited the entire team to the White House he would like you there on Wednesday and it's a I hope you'll accept his invitation we'll do dispense with the phone call to tonight and I'd like to if I can to Peter O'Malley, you, you deserve this. Fred Flair. Thank you, Commissioner. Tommy and Fred and I accept this, Commissioner, on behalf of the great team we have in the front office and on the field. We're very happy and we're very thankful. Thank you. Thanks Peter, well, guys. when the president calls, I guess you'll be there Wednesday. We're honored to be invited and we sure will be there. I think all the players will be there. Fred Clare, so many of the players spontaneously have given credit to you uh, in your first full year as general manager. What a dream come true. I give the credit to the players, to Tommy, to the staff, to every member of the Dodger organization because in this room tonight, I feel the presence of all the people there who have helped us, our scouts, our minor league people, everyone who has contributed to the Dodgers, past and present. They're with us tonight. We accept this on their behalf. All right, Tommy, now to you. You don't need a question. Just make your statement. Well, I want to say, to reiterate what Peter and Fred said, you know, for two years we suffered a great deal. And now the Dodgers are back on top. We are the world champs of baseball. And I'll tell you something, it is a great, great ball club. They never quit believing in themselves. They have to be an influence 
on everybody in the world because it shows you what someone can do when he really wants something bad enough. Nobody believed that this team could finish first in the division. Nobody believed that we could beat the Mets. Nobody believed that we can beat the Athletics who won 104 games. We did it. A great ball club. We want to thank the Oakland organization for the way they treated us here. They were outstanding, and the fans were great here. So we want to say to all of our fans, here is the championship that we always hoped that you would get back, and we're very, very proud of all our fans and everybody in the entire organization. And speaking of your opponents, Tom, American League President Dr. Bobby Brown here very graciously to extend his congratulations. I know he wants to move in for a handshake. Thank you, Doctor, and thank you very much. You know, it was a great series. You, you won your division, you beat the Mets, and you beat the Athletics, and you're the world's champions, and, champions, and you deserved it. Great, great. Thanks, well, Bobby, and I want to say to the Oakland baseball team, and Tony LaRusso. They gave us a good battle. They're great people, and we wish them luck in 1989. We'll be back to the Dodger Clubhouse as the postgame celebration continues right after these messages. Chevy versus Ford. Compact and full-size pickups in a test of standard four-wheel drive systems. They start in two-wheel drive, but they're going to have to shift into four-wheel to make it across the ditch of doom. The Chevy shift and keep going, but the Ford drivers have to stop and lock hubs. Why is America having a change of heart in pickups? Chevy gives you standard shift on the fly, Instatrack. Ford doesn't. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. When it comes to TV, Americans are the world's most adoring fans and knowledgeable critics. So it's not surprising that in a nation of experts, the television of choice comes from the people who've made the most technological innovations in the industry, RCA. Just one reason more Americans buy RCA video equipment than any other. RCA, number one with the toughest critics in the world. As soon as you get out there, call Mike Butler at the Century 21 office. Well, he already called me, Dad. <laughs> Check the utility bills. I will, Dad. You know, the right mortgage. Uh, isn't this guy Butler a friend of yours? Yeah, sure. Well, if he's half the guy you are, I bet I can trust him. Come with us. Take care of yourself. Put your trust in number one. Write your mother. Century 21. For more than 80 years, people have come home to homes with Anderson windows. Come home. And while times have changed, our commitment to quality and to the home has not. Which is why today, more people come home to Anderson windows than any other. Come home to quality. Come home to Anderson. We're back in the Dodger Clubhouse. It's time for the presentation of the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Series Award, representing Chevrolet, Otto LeBron Jr., sales manager for the Chevrolet Motor Division. And let me dip out of the way as you can take care of Mr. Hershey. Carl, congratulations and on a terrific season. We're very happy to present to you the Most Valuable Player Award. Super season. Now, in addition, we've got a passenger car truck that you can give to your favorite charity. All right. Well, I, I'd like to accept this award on behalf of my whole team. we got some guys on this team that play with a lot of heart. I think that uh, Mickey Hatcher had an outstanding series, Steve Sachs. The bullpen came through and had a great great series. And uh, I, I received the award, yes, but I received it on behalf of my team. And as far as the car and going to a charity, the, the van, and uh, I'll take that award. I will take it and I will donate. I was named uh, the Cystic Fibrosis uh, Chairman this year of the L.A. Dodgers, 65 Roses Club, and I'd like to donate it to that charity. Great. Thank you. Get it for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oral. Oral Hirschhauser, congratulations again. And as the celebration continues here, we'll send it back upstairs to the broadcast booth at the Oakland Coliseum. Whoa! I almost made it to the end. Vin and Joe are plenty dry, fellas. Well, and what most people <laughs> feel is the year of the improbable. We saw the Dodgers do what the experts thought was impossible. We saw and heard a lot of things in the clubhouse, but I haven't heard anyone mention it yet. But it's simply this. 
In a year that saw the Dodgers win the world's championship against a great ball club, the Oakland Athletics, and they did it in five games, the Dodgers' leading candidate for the most valuable player, Kirk Gibson, had one at bat. One at bat, and what a one at bat it was. This World Series gave us a lot of excitement. And I tell you, we also saw, I think, a, just don't want to throw it away, that touch of class of La Russa letting Todd Burns pitch. It's been a great year. It was climaxed by this great World Series, and it's just good to be a part of it. And indeed, it was to see the ex-Dodgers in A's uniforms, the ex-A's in Dodger uniforms, and finally it was settled as the Dodgers in five games defeat the A's 5-2. to two. For Joe Garagiola, this is Vin Scully from the Oakland Coliseum. Good night.
This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.